For this portion of the grids and modularity assignment, we're going to focus much more on the grid. The last one we focused a little bit more on modularity. This one's really about grid structures and how can we use them to create unity, but also use them to create variety across these different compositions. So here I have the template that was provided to you on the learning management system open. It's an Adobe Illustrator file. And you'll notice right away that there's 10 artboards or pages here. So you'll need to do 10 compositions in total. So we're really gonna look at how can we use the same grid across all 10 of these compositions to create, again, some unity, but also variety. This is really about layout, and it's really about thinking about how we approach layout in the organization of content. So the first thing I'm gonna do is save the file. And then I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see what's going on. So you'll see that there are all these blue or aqua lines. Those are actually the guides and the guides are how we create grid. These are invisible. These are things that do not print. You will not see these, but they allow us to line things up in the file and keep things where they need to be. This is what we would consider a modular grid. There's nine equal size squares here with spaces between them. So each of these squares are considered a module and these are the gutters or the spaces between them. And it might look familiar. This is very similar to the structure of the last assignment. We're just gonna use this structure very differently. We have the same compositional boundary. If each of these were filled with those nine black squares, we would end up with a very similar file, but we're gonna do something different here. Another thing to know is that guidelines are really powerful and useful, and the way you make one is by clicking and holding on the ruler and then dragging down. That will actually create a guideline. The guidelines have already been created here for you, so you don't wanna do that, I'm gonna undo. But just so you know, that's how you would actually create one if you wanted to in Adobe Illustrator. And it's the same in Adobe InDesign as well. Another thing to know is that if you go to view, and then guides, you can actually turn the guides off. So hide guides. This is also a really valuable shortcut to know, command semicolon, because that can really allow you to turn the guides on and off to see what you're working on. Because the grid here is gonna be really important. Everything we do in this assignment needs to fit on that grid. But let's look at what we need to build to put on the grid. So again, this is a simulate a layout that you might create, something that you might build for a poster or a magazine or a book or a website. And when we do that, we're always usually working with some kind of image and some kind of text. So we're gonna do almost a sketch digitally for that. Sometimes when we create layouts and we're trying to figure out how we wanna organize content, we'll draw boxes with X's through them that represent images and we'll draw lines that represent text. So we're sort of doing that here, but in a digital way. So we're gonna create some shapes. I'm gonna come over to the rectangle tool, create a shape. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the stroke and I'm gonna fill it with 80% K or black. So that's gonna be the darker color. Then I wanna create another one. I'm just gonna duplicate this. And this one I'm gonna create 40% black. So the darker color here is gonna represent the images and the lighter color is gonna represent the text. You cannot use color on this, but you don't have to use these exact grays if you wanna do a darker or a lighter one, as long as they're discernible, as long as there's enough contrast that we can tell which one is the lighter one that's text and which one is the darker one that is image. And that gets us what we need to now start playing with the grid, to start putting content on it. So I can move this over and start thinking about what I wanna make. Well, maybe on this first one, it's some kind of a spread of a book where there's a large image and then a little bit of text describing that image. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over and start placing this. So one thing that's important is everything that you do has to fit on the grid. It's mostly what you're graded for on this assignment. This doesn't work. You can only use the modules in their entirety and everything has to line up with the grid lines. So because we're using only portions of these modules and the edges at the right and the bottom aren't matching a grid line, this doesn't really work. So, you know, this would work. If I moved it up like that, that would be acceptable. And so would this. I think this is the layout I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with a large square image that's created by combining these four square modules together. Then I wanna create a little bit of text. I'm gonna create a narrow column of text that'll be over here and combine these two modules together. Something like that. So I like to rough it out at first and kind of look at it Maybe turn the guides off, that looks pretty good. But another thing that's important is we want things to fit on that grid, so we want you to 
be specific here. Make sure you finesse this and get it right. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and work with these corners. If you work with the corners, you only have to do it twice, but you're also welcome to move all four sides individually. But if I do the diagonal pull on each corner, that will solve it too. So you just wanna make sure you're doing a good job on this, that things are where they need to be. Again, this is the main thing that you get graded on. So it's important that things are on that grid so that when your instructor is grading this, they're very sure that you've used the grid structure properly. So that looks pretty good, I like that. It's okay to have white space on here, it's something we actually encourage, so it might be something you explore, but you can also fill the entire thing as well. You might try that on a few of them. One thing that's important though is that you always use image and text, so both shades of gray. You always need to use both of them on every composition. But we also wanna focus on variety, making them different. So maybe on the next one I'll explore multiple smaller images with maybe a little bit of larger text for each one. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this over. And I'm thinking maybe it'll just be one module this time. I'll just create something small, a little image like this. And then maybe down below it will be actually the same column of text, but it'll be more by proportion comparative to this smaller photo. So now I'm gonna come in here and make sure everything's on the grid. And then since I know I already fixed this on the grid, I just mostly need to move it to make sure it's there. So that looks good. And maybe what I'll do is maybe this is one where I will fill the entire composition and I'll duplicate this. So I'm selecting both and then copying it across and then I'll do it one more time. And since I know these are the right sizes now, I just need to select both and then zoom in and check it in one spot to make sure it's in the right place. So that looks good. I'll check this one, but I need to zoom out so I can select both of them. Oops. All right, so now that's entirely on the grid. So two examples, again, one where I'm filling the entire thing up, one where there's more white space. I'm playing with different kinds of layouts. Again, it's really important that all 10 of these are completely different, but they must all have both shades of gray, so text and image. So this is fun to play with. It'll really show you the power of a modular grid, the way you can use a grid to create unity, but again, also variety in all the different types of layouts that you could create. So once you finish this, which I obviously haven't, you're gonna come up here to file, do a save as to create that PDF, which then you can upload for grading. You want all of the artboards selected here. You can navigate and save it anywhere you like, and that will create that file that ultimately you'll be able to upload. As always, if you have any questions at all, you can write to your instructor to get help. And I hope you have fun exploring the possibilities of this grid and the different kinds of layouts that you can create.